um, Dr. Lori Marbus, and I'm happy to uh, start presenting lives every morning between 9 and 10 a.m. Pacific. Might be off a little bit depending on patients. But recently I got a question regarding what labs you should be checking if you eat a plant-based diet. And so I just kind of wanted to go over a few and what might be a little bit differently depending on how long you've been eating a plant-based diet and some questions you may want to ask your provider. Also, um, would love to hear any questions you might have regarding further topics you'd like me to discuss in future lives. So trying to be here every single day. So I'm excited to present this first one, which I think will um, answer a lot of questions. So first of all, it's a CBC, it's a complete blood count. And basically what this does, it looks at your white blood cells, your red blood cells, and your platelets. And these can tell you a lot of information. For example, white blood cells, oftentimes in my patients who eat a very strict whole food plant-based diet and have very low inflammation, you actually might fall outside of the low normal. And somewhere in between like 2.5 and 4 is typically where I'll see those hit. The other things to be looking for are, of course, red blood cells. So this tells you hemoglobin and hematocrit, and this will tell you if you're anemic. And there's different sizes of red blood cells. That's the other thing that are important with the CBC. The actual size, so if it's small, there might be an iron deficiency issue. If it's a normal size red blood cell, you may have some other indications like kidney disease or chronic disease that may be causing anemia. And if they're large, it could be something like a B12 deficiency, which of course can be an issue if you're on a plant-based diet, not paying attention to the one supplement that I recommend, which is B12. Additionally, platelets. Platelets are important for clotting. Not really seeing much of a difference other than if you have a lot of inflammation, you might see a rise in platelets. But again, um, on a whole food plant-based diet, sometimes you'll see a lower end if someone has really low inflammation. For example, I've actually had other morbidly obese patients in the past who would check a CBC, which is the complete blood count, uh, shorter name for what we refer to as a CBC. And you can see, you know, white blood cells hit above 10, 11, 12 quite regularly. There was no signs of infection or anything else that would indicate a reason why other than being um, having obesity that can cause significant inflammation in the body. So that might be uh, something to check on a regular basis. And most doctors do when you go to your annual exam, they're checking a CBC. Next is a comprehensive metabolic panel. So this has a variety of things that we're checking. First of all, it's a fasting blood sugar, uh, just to check your glucose. We check kidney function, liver function, protein status like albumin or protein, and a few electrolytes like sodium, potassium, and things like that. So most of the time, these things are okay, but if you have a history of kidney disease or liver disease, it could be uh, something nice to check again as you go along on your plant-based journey because we might see a lot of these things improve, especially if you have inflammation from non-fatty liver disease, or excuse me, fatty liver disease, which is a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Um, those things can tend to improve. Renal disease to a degree can also improve or kidney disease. So again, those are some good things to be monitoring. Uh, more recently, I've seen some women who have heavy, heavy periods or maybe they're being a little bit too restrictive in their plant-based diet, not including a lot of dark green leafies and things <clears throat> and other things like soy or beans. And I want to check iron and ferritin. So iron is in the blood and that's, of course, important for hemoglobin and some other things, but iron can also be important for hair growth and a variety of other things. So ferritin is the protein that helps you store iron. So I like to check both of these because an iron in the blood can actually be even el slightly elevated or normal in someone who actually has low ferritin levels, meaning that they don't have enough iron in their body. So if I have someone who has heavy periods or you know, again, someone who's not consuming enough calories or eating enough iron-rich foods, you may see low stores of ferritin, which can really be involved with fatigue and some other things. So for women, I like to see your ferritin above 50. You know, oftentimes, sometimes if you have that fatigue, you just can't figure out your doctor saying all your labs are normal. If we work on your iron, focus in on iron-rich foods, oftentimes you'll see that ferritin bump and feel much better. You can also interfere with sleep. So again, 
looking at um, some of the more common complaints, those are some things I would check. Uh, thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH. It's just one of the most common autoimmune diseases in the country. I was diagnosed um, with Hashimoto's 27 years ago when I was pregnant with my second child. So my going on a plant-based diet has certainly helped me with my thyroid. I still take a medication called levothyroxine, but it's at a much lower dose now. So again, if you follow a very, very strict whole food plant-based diet and some are what we call SOS-free or salt, oil, and sugar-free, you may actually remove uh, the one source of iodine. So iodine comes, it's rich in sea vegetables and things. So if you're eating nori or plant-based, you know, sushi or those things, that would be great. Um, the problem with removing complete sources of iodine, however, is that it can interfere with your thyroid function. And I have seen this a few times where I had a plant-based diet uh, eater patient come along and it's like, I feel great other than now I've been diagnosed with, um, looks like a very mild case of hypothyroidism. So then we check another test I'll get to in a minute, which is a 24-hour urine iodine. And we will see that they low. We start either adding in a half a teaspoon of iodized salt daily, if they can do the salt, or we do 150 micrograms of a supplement. And sure enough, the thyroid function returns and they go on about their, their life and leaving, living a healthy life. So those are some things to be mindful of. So checking a TSH is helpful. A lipid panel is cholesterol panel. The, the nice thing about checking a lipid panel is that it should be improving on a whole food plant-based diet. And there's some tweaks that can occur. For example, if I have someone who's following what they'd consider a healthy whole food plant-based diet, and we continue to look and see that their cholesterol remains high or their triglycerides, these are points of discussion to talk about processed foods and you know how Beyond Burgers and Impossible Burgers, even though they're good for the animals and the environment, are not necessarily good for your health. And so we did have, it's a great discussion point. Other pieces of that is it makes you realize you're, man, you're doing everything right and your total cholesterol is dropping below 150 and your LDL is dropping below 100 or 70 and you're doing everything right. So it makes you feel good to know that you're doing everything you can to prevent heart attacks, which are the number one killers of Americans, men and women in the United States. So again, it's just something to, to to check and again, just to see how you're doing each year. Vitamin D, many patients um, struggle to be outside because of the world we live in for a good 10 to 15 minutes for with sufficient sunshine, especially during the winter months and may not get enough vitamin D. So I like to keep my vitamin D levels above 30. And sometimes that requires supplementation, which I discuss with each individual patient, depending on the amount. Most people will need around 2,000 international units daily. Again, that's not everyone. And it really depends on the person, where they live, how active they are outside. But it should be monitored because this is important for bone health, immunity, and a few other things. And then we get to the B12. B12 is the one supplement that is non-negotiable that I recommend for patients is because we're in a plant-based diet, you will not have a ready source in your food, typical foods that allow you to get enough B12. There may be some fortified foods that you're consuming, but again, it's questionable if you're getting enough, especially if you're on certain medications like metformin or over-the-counter proton pump inhibitors, you may not be getting enough B12 because that inhibits the absorption of B12. So I take the comment from my friend, Dr. Joel Kahn, test, don't guess. And I would check a few things with your B12. That includes the B12, see what's in your blood, but also homocysteine and methylmalonic acid. And the reason I mentioned the, those other two is that they require B12 to be further metabolized in the, your body. And so when they're elevated, even though your B12 level may be quote unquote normal, you may need to up your B12 a little bit. And typically what I like to see with my B12 patient or B12 levels in my patients is make sure that level stays above 500. I have seen even people who have quote unquote normal between that 250 and 500 on their labs, they're still symptomatic, fatigue, maybe tingling, nerve pain, and some other things, uh, brain fog without enough B12. Again, this is how much should you be taking? It really depends on how well you absorb, how low are your levels. 
and medications that you may be on. I, my patients typically are anywhere between 500 to 1,000 micrograms daily. I do recommend the cyanocobalamin, um, which is important for going down a, different, a few different pathways. If you do take a methylcobalamin, which you'll see in a lot of health food stores, I do um, recommend an additional type, either the cyanocobalamin or adenosylcobalamin, either, you know, probably around 500 micrograms of each. Again, it depends on the patient, why they're taking it, but those are just some things to be mindful of. And then finally, a 24-hour urine collection uh, for the iodine. If you're very, very strict on your salt intake, uh, don't have ready access to sea vegetables or eat those because personally, I'm not a big fan of the sea vegetable flavor. But um, again, something to be yeah, checking if you are very, very strict on the SOS kind of side of things. So again, this there's place for everyone in a plant-based world and eating a healthy plant-based diet, but it doesn't mean you should be ignoring your your labs and just thinking that you're all okay. But again, just once a year, I would recommend these. If they're normal, great. If they're not, then there needs to be some tweaking involved. And I am seeing patients at drmarvis.com. I'm licensed in all 50 states, including Washington, D.C. And I also have um, a wonderful partnership with Brittany Giroudi. We have, it's called The Healing Kitchen. And for a very low $20 per month, you get to meet with us weekly live on Wednesday evenings. We provide two delicious recipes we cook together with Brittany. We can ask all those questions about how to make food flavorful. And then the last half hour is I'm answering all any and all medical questions. Uh, nothing gets left on the table. And it's been a lot of fun. We've been doing this for several months now. And again, um, wonderful place to be and create community. And it's been a, a really a joyful experience for myself. And then finally, I'm running a beta group on a glucose mastermind. If you could see here, I'm wearing a CGM. It's a continuous glucose monitor. I will be starting additional groups next month. And there is a place on our website to be placed on the waiting list if you're interested. And that's a lot of fun. Again, this is for pre-diabetics, non-diabetics, diabetics. It doesn't matter. I take 20 patients per group because I feel like the group dynamic is so important. And we meet twice a month for an hour or more. And we really focus in on their patterns and learning what food is doing to your body and how you can make it better. So I hope you found this helpful. Please leave kind comments below and any questions you may have or other topic suggestions. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week.